Welcome to another Asa Ablu Academy webinar. Today's webinar is going to be on Corbin Russwin's cylindrical locks. My name is Russell Corvo, and I will be your lead instructor today. To give you a brief history on myself, I started back in 1986 at Sargent Manufacturing. Started off as a tool and die designer. Ended up as a manufacturing engineer for about 12 years. And about 10 years ago, they asked me to join the academy to become one of the trainers. So now I train people on our products. Today's session should last about 45 minutes. And during the session, your lines will be muted. However, you can post questions using the question and answer icon at the bottom of the page. And we will save time at the end for your questions. This session is being recorded and will be available within 24 hours. Also within 24 hours, you will receive an email as your proof of attendance to this webinar that can be submitted to your employer or one of the industry association partners, such as DHI or ALOA, in lieu of, uh, in, in lieu of industry CEUs uh, for a certificate of completion, because these are very short trainings. Keep in mind, we have over 50 online classes that are all available at no cost to you. To get started with those classes, just join the Academy and get start learning at your own pace. So today we're going to be talking about Corbin Russwin cylindrical locks. I always think before it's a good, before we get in dive into the product itself, it's always a good idea to see where it's made. So this is the Corbin Russwin facility in Berlin, Connecticut. It's actually quite a huge facility. And at the bottom is a nice panoramic view of the inside of it. It's a, actually a very nice factory. It is very large though. So we're gonna start off by, Corbin Russwin actually has four different series of cylindrical locks. We're gonna start off by talking about the CL3100 series. This is more of a board lock. This is their very best in terms of strength when it comes to cylindrical locks. It's a very unique design because it has what they call the T-zone construction. It has the T-zone construction because of the layout of the lever handles and the latch bolt assembly because it goes completely through the bearing assembly where all the springs are contained. So it makes it a very, very strong product. This lock comes with a 10 year warranty and there's no service required to maintain the warranty on this. Here's a little video telling you a little bit more about the lock. Since the early 1800s, Corbin Russell has designed and manufactured high quality, innovative door hardware for commercial and institutional facilities. Now an Asa Abloy Group brand and market leader in locks, key systems, exit devices, door closers, decorative hardware, and electronic access control products, Corbin Russman continues its leadership with the CL3100 lever lock. With its unique patented construction, the CL3100 series is safe and secure, reliable and durable, supplements sustainability and a healthy environment, all with a low cost of ownership. So how does this design deliver such impressive results? In the CL3100 series, the latch interlocks the chassis, forming a torque-resistant T. Because of this design, the chassis cannot twist or rotate in the door, and excessive force on the lock through the levers won't damage or disable the lock, providing a safe and secure environment. This chassis ensures the CL3100 provides superior performance in demanding environments. And when combined with other board locks from Corbin Russwin, the entire facility can be secured using the same key system and with the right level of security for each opening. The end result? A lock body that's reliable and durable to last as long as the life of your building, lowering the total cost of ownership of the opening, and withstands high abuse environments. Flexible, strong, and durable. This lock can take whatever you give it. This lock is very different than most every other cylindrical lock out there. Here's a good look at it. And as you can see, it's very different because it's more, the individual components can be switched out to be able to change functions with the lock. So it's actually a multi-function lock by changing the sleeves. What we're pointing out here are the sleeves and the sleeves determine the functions. So by changing out the sleeves in this lock here, you can change the function and how the lock operates and continue to use the same bearing assembly, the same levers and such. So it makes it a very friendly lock in the sense that it is a multi-function lock. 
when it comes to lever types, there's only there's multiple designs, but there's only two types, one with a cylinder hole, one without a cylinder hole. So it keeps it simple in terms of number of cylinders. This is the bearing assembly. This is non-handed, and this is where all the springs are contained inside of it. And this is completely non-handed, so it's the same one for all of the products too. There's no variation. And lastly, we have the latch bolt assemblies. There's five different latch bolt assemblies and the, la the, lever the latch bolt assembly that you'll be using is gonna be based on the function that you're gonna be using. The unique thing about it is as you can see, this latch bolt assembly is very, very long and it actually goes completely through the bearing assembly as you slide it in. And then there's a hardened steel pin on the other side that holds the whole thing together. So it makes it a very unique design. If you're not aware of it, most other cylindrical locks, usually the latch assembly usually engages the body in this area here, but that's it. But with this one here, it goes completely through the bearing assembly, creating a very strong lock. And this is the reason why it doesn't require any through bolt holes. Most other cylindrical locks require through bolt holes because they're only attached here on the very edge here. But because it goes completely through, the through bolt holes aren't needed because of the size of the latch assembly. So what kind of cycle life can you expect out of a cylindrical lock? According to ANSI BHMA, to be a grade one cylindrical lock, you have to be able to go at least 1 million cycles. And the way this works is you have 10 pounds of resistance on the opposite side of the door, and you're not pulling right on the axis of the lever handle because nobody holds onto it there. You, handle, you pull it open by the lever part of it. So that you're actually pulling on the lock two inches off the center line. So it becomes a very realistic test. This is what a cycle test looks like. It's done on a machine like this. And this would represent a full size door. You would have to cycle at least one million times. Corbin Rossman has third party verification that they've done this over 34 million times. Os Avlo and Corbin Rossman, they do a real lot of testing. This is an interesting test. I lever vertical impact test. Lock is subjected to five blows in excess of 75 foot pounds per blow. I just wanted to show you some of the different tests that they do on cylindrical locks to determine how durable they are. This test here is only done on grade one locks and it has to be able to withstand five blows of 74 foot pounds of force. And you're striking it an inch and a half off the face of the door. And this is basically where someone would be hitting it with a sledgehammer or something like that. So it's actually quite a violent test. The next test we're gonna look at is the cylinder face impact test. Once again, this is only done on grade one locks. And this you're impacting the face of the cylinder with 60 foot pounds of force. Cylinder face impact. ANSI BHMA standard, 60 foot pounds. And the CL3100 was able to go 25% higher and it was able to do 75 foot pounds without any issues at all. This is the test that actually causes most manufacturers to have to have through bolt holes with their cylindrical locks. This is called the lock torque test. With this one here, they're going, they put the lock in the locked position and then they try to torque the lever out with 700 pound inches of force. What is 700 pound inches of force? The way you need to think about it is since you can't rotate it right on its axis, you need to move off the axis by four inches. So if you take 700 pounds, divide it by four, that would be equivalent to about 175 pounds, four inches off the center line of the lock. And it has to be able to withstand that much force and continue to operate. And if you think about it, 175 pounds is not that much. And this is the grade one requirement. An adapter and torque wrench are used to apply twisting force to the locked outer lever. T-zone results withstands over 3,000 inch pounds, no entry, more than any other grade one board in lock. 3,000 pounds divided by four would be equivalent of 750 pounds, four inches off the center line. They do the same test with an unlock lever handle. And with an unlock lever handle, it has to withstand 450 pound inches of rotational force and continue to operate. 
Unlocked lever torque testing. ANSI BHMA standard, 450 inch pounds. T zone results, 1,000 inch pounds fully operational. And this is all done without any through bolt holes, which is actually quite remarkable. The next we're going to take a look at is what they call an impact test. Impact test. Multiple blows of NC BHMA standard 120. Multiple blows of increasing force are applied to the door adjacent to a pre-cut lever. T-zone results withstands 150 foot-pounds, no entry. And if you're not aware of it, 150 foot-pounds is all that a grade one mortise lock needs to be able to withstand, be able to withhandle. Grade one cylindrical lock is 120 foot-pounds of force, and a grade one mortise lock is only 150 foot-pounds of force. So this was able to withstand the impact testing required for an ANSI BHMA grade one mortise lock. The next test we're going to show you is not an ANSI BHMA test, but some of the engineers getting together on a Friday afternoon to test some locks. This is a Stanley Best cylindrical lock. Can we put a ramp up it? <laughs> Recording? I don't know. PDQ. That was sad. Yeah. Right. That should do good. You're in. Aren't you? Wow. Get it in focus. Okay, it's recording. I know okay. where we can go. Schleg, give me a couple hours. Here we go. And now they're going to do the CL3100 series and see how that would stand. Okay. This is a classroom function. Yeah, yeah explode on me. Continue to bend the door. We're not going to do anything to that. And it's still up. Separated the bearing. Good times. <laughs> Good job, Todd. <laughs> I'm thoroughly impressed with that. I say you leave it in both facilities. They ended up using a crowbar to get the door open. Next, we're going to take a look at how you order Corbin Ruskin cylindrical locks. Here, we're looking at a common ordering string. In the beginning, they were specifying a key set of AA1. Because a key set is being specified, that means they're going to want this group of locks master keyed together. Next, you have the CL, and with Corbin Ruswin, the first two letters always represents the product line. So CL represents cylindrical locks, ML would be mortise locks. So it's a CL followed by the series. It's a 3100 series, and the last two digits represent the function of it. And they do offer all the standard functions plus many additional functions. Here we're just showing you a few of the basic functions such as classroom, storeroom, entry function, and communicating function. With Corbin Ruswin, you always specify the lever design, then the base material for the lever, and then the rose design. So in this case here, we're pointing out a Newport lever with a zinc, zinc being the base metal of the lever handle, 
and the rose design is a D, so it's an N, Z, D or E. E is a square rose. This D is a round rose. There are also other lever designs available. So these are the other lever designs available with the CL3100. And the CL3100 is actually available with four lever designs. And the lever design called out in the ordering string across the top, the NZE, this is the E rose that they're referring to there. It's the square rose. And for Corbin Russwin, this square rose is only available with this board and lock. Next, you always want to specify the finish. And here they're using BHMA finishes. They're specifying 626, which is a satin chrome finish. And keep in mind, Corbin Russwin does a lot of specialized and customized finishes. So you, if you ever need something customized, they can do that. I would definitely contact the factory and work with them because on the far right, you see customized powder coating colors with bright colors. Kids like that, grammar schools and such. On the upper middle, that's a copper plated exit device. And then they also do vapor, vapor vapor disposition. So they do customized finishes and you can call them on it. They will do it. Next, you always want to specify the hand. Even if you know it's a non-handed product, you always want to specify the hand. And then you get into specialty products, specialty features. So here they're specifying door thickness of D214. If you're not aware of it, in this industry, the standard backs, the standard door thickness is one and three quarter inches. And the CL3100 will go on a one and three quarter inch up to a two inch door without any issues. But if you're putting it on a two and a quarter inch thick door, you need to specify that. And that would be specified as D214. Okay, so D214. The standard back set in this industry is two and three quarter inches. That is the standard. So if that's what you have, for, if that's what you're looking for and nothing needs to be specified. So when it's used with a standard door thickness, doesn't need to be specified. A standard back set, it does not need to be specified. But if you're looking for a three and three quarter inch back set, that is specified with a B334. B stands for back set. And previously the D stood for door thickness. They also have that available with a five inch back set and that would be B for back set 500. If you're not looking for the standard strike and the standard strike for this lock is gonna be the SA114. And if that's the strike that you're gonna be using, nothing needs to be specified. But in our sample order here, they're looking for an SC114, which is this T strike that I'm showing you here. Okay, and keep in mind, they are available with different lip lengths. And if you're not aware of it, the lip length is the distance from the end of the lip to the center of the mounting holes. Okay, that is the standard. Next, we have miscellaneous options. Okay, miscellaneous options cover uh, just various options that you can add to the product. For example, M04 is specifying torque head screws and M16 would be a three quarter inch latch bolt throw. And this is required on, if this lock was gonna be used in a purifier rated doors, you would need, it, would be, it would require a three quarter inch latch bolt throw. Next, we're gonna take a few minutes and review some of the other miscellaneous codes. Okay, <clears throat> they also have spanner head screws specified as M02. We already talked about the torque head screws, which is specified as M08. If you would like your lock to accept a Schlage conventional cylinder, they can do that for you. That would be specified as M06, okay? Uh, it would be supplied with a tailpiece, but without a cylinder because you'd be installing a Schlage conventional cylinder in there. You can also get this lock to accept either a six or seven pin small format interchangeable core, which is nice because the lever will accept six or seven pin. If you would like your lock to accept a sergeant cylinder, then you would specify M09 and your lock will accept a sergeant cylinder. If you're looking for a wrought box strike, if your frame, say if your frame is not being supplied with mortar boxes on the back side of the frame, then you could would order the wrought box strikes. This is specified as M17 or 
excuse me, M17. And this will keep that area clean where the latch bolt and the deadbolt are projecting or where the latch bolt is projecting. We also offer uh, handicap warnings, which is knurling on the inside, outside, or both levers, or you can get it as an abrasive coating for the inside, outside, or both levers. Just so you know, these warnings that they have on levers are not required by any code out there. It's a, just a nice to have, but it is not required by any code out there. If you would like your lock to accept a Schlage large format interchangeable core, then you're gonna specify M69 and it will accept a Schlage large format interchangeable core. As you can see, it's a very versatile lock. They even have a higher security feature to, for securing the lever and it's called the secure lever and it's specified as M111. Continuing on, in our sample ordering string, C6 specifies Corbin Ruswin six pin interchangeable core cylinders. Okay, and that would be specified as C6. As we just mentioned a moment ago, if you're gonna be using the small format interchangeable core, keep in mind small format interchangeable core is the universal design that was originally developed by the best lock company and that a lot of other manufacturers use as their standard. When we talk about Corbin Ruswin's interchangeable core, that's their particular design and it's very different from the small format interchangeable core. If you're ordering a Corbin Ruswin lock and you don't specify any type of cylinder, you will receive a six pin cylinder standard. And if you need seven pin system, it would be a seven P. If you're gonna be using someone else's key system though, you would wanna specify LC for less cylinder. These locks will each come with two cylinders. And if you need more than two keys, you would specify KY and the number of keys you needed to get more keys. So to get seven keys, you would specify KY seven and you would receive seven additional keys. The standard conventional cylinders will be brass, six pin. They'll come with an L4 keyway and they will be zero bitted so they can be bid, so they can be field pinned. If you would like your key, if you like your cylinders all key different, so every lock was operated by a different key, you could specify that by specifying KR for keyed random, or you can also get them construction master keyed. So you have special keys used during the construction phase of the building, and once the building is turned over, those construction cores are removed and actual cores are put in. Okay. You can actually get the Corbin Ruswin cylinders with a Schlage C keyway on it. You can get Schlage C keyway keyed random. So it's already pinned, just keyed random. Or you can get it with a Sergeant keyway, the Sergeant LA keyway zero bitted, okay? One thing to be aware of that's different with Corbin Ruswin and this is good if you're gonna be using different cylinders, is that the standard cylinders and the axis three cylinders, the plug diameter is 509. But if you're looking at the, pyramid, the security cylinders, the plug diameter is 552 and the pyramid cylinders is 496. So it will make a difference in the size of the cylinder hole on the lever. So keep that in mind. Um, because it's going to be master keyed, they, with Corbin Ruswin, they do offer a number of different types of visual key control and conceal key control. And that's what's being specified with the VKC3. So depending on whether you're looking for visual or concealed key control, they'll stamp the keys and the cylinders accordingly. As I mentioned in the very beginning, Corbin Ruswin actually has four different series of cylindrical locks. The CL3100, the one we've been talking about, the CL3300, which is also a grade one. They also have the CL3500 and they have the CL3800. And since we've already gone over the CL3100, I figured we'd do a quick rundown on what the difference is between the locks. So I'm not repeating myself. So doing this, looking at the certification, certifications and features, 
The CL31, 33, and 35 are all grade one locks. The only one that's a grade two lock is the 3800. And keep in mind, the grade two locks are gonna be used in the areas with less usage, such as closet doors, doors that, that are not gonna be used as often. Grade two locks work great because they have the exact same look as the grade one lock, but at a lower price. Okay, with the CL3100 and the CL3500, the lever is rigid when it is in the locked position, but the CL3300 and the CL3800 offer what they call the lever released designed for a vandal resistance. So basically, the CL3300 and the 3800, when they are in the locked position, the lever handle rotates freely and does nothing. With the other two series, the CL3100 and the CL3500, the lever is gonna be rigid when it is locked. So when you walk up to the door, it's rigid. So they do offer both types, the vandal resistant and the standard. When it comes to functions, the CL3300 is by far has the most functions and it also includes electrical functions. The CL3100 has 18 functions and the CL3500, 11 functions and the CL3800, which is the grade two lock only has nine functions available. When you look at the warranty, because the CL3100 is their very best top of the line cylindrical lock, that comes with a 10 year warranty. Both the CL3300 and the CL3500 have seven year warranties and the CL3800, the grade two lock has a five year warranty. So the warranty does vary. And when you look at the latch bolt, the CL3100 and the CL3300 both have stainless steel latch bolts while the other two have brass latch bolts. But keep in mind, the first three are grade one when you look at the different lever designs, Corbin Russman offers a few different levers. The Armstrong lever, which I'm showing you there, is available for all four series and is specified with an A. The Newport lever is available for all four series and is specified as an N. The Princeton lever is specified with a P and once again is available for all four series. And here's the exception. The Fasacci lever is only available with the CL3300 and it's the only one of the four levers that has a contour to it. So it's the only one that makes it a handed product. When it comes to rose designs, Horror and Russman has always had a standard rose and it's the D rose I'm showing you here. This has been their standard rose design across the board for many years. And this way they can have a very consistent look with different levels of security in the building all using different series of locks. So the D rose is available for all four series, but the CL3100 also offers three additional roses, the C rose, the E rose, and the K rose are all available with the CL3100, but are not available with the other series. So the D rose is the standard rose. When we talk about the quick codes, which we ran through before, looking at those, spanner head screws available across the board. Torque head screws, they're also available across the board. If you'd like to order to accept a Schley conventional cylinder, once again, that's available across the board. You can get it to accept small format interchangeable cores also for six or seven pin, available for all four series. If you're not aware of it, the standard lock front on a, these locks here it's going to be an inch and a quarter wide. Don't forget it's going in an inch and three quarter inch thick door and it's an inch and a quarter wide, okay? If you would like rounded corners on your latch bolt front, like I'm showing you there, that's going to be specified as M13 and that's available for everything except for the CL3100, okay? If you would like a narrower latch front, like a one inch latch front, that's gonna be specified as an M14, and that's only available for the CL3500 and 3800. And if you would like the one inch latch front with the rounded corners, that's gonna be an M15. And once again, that's only available for the CL3500 and the CL3800. 
The three quarter inch latch bolt throw required on fire rated pairs of doors is only available for the CL3100 and the CL3300, which is the top of the line for their cylindrical locks. Of course, the wrought box strike is going to be available across the board. And the knurling on the inside or outside levers is also available across the board for all four series. A few more quick codes to look at. This is the abrasive coating. Once again, this is available across the board. But if it's going to be used in an area with high amounts of radiation or an x-ray room, you need to get that lead lined. And that's only available with the CL3100 and the CL3300, which is the two higher levels. That's specified as an M28. If you want to accept Schlage large format interchangeable core, you can get that for all the grade one locks, and that's an M69. If you'd like to get a request to exit switch, the only one that's available with a request to exit switch is the CL3300. So if you are gonna be using in an electrified situation, you will need to go with the CL3300 series. For the special high security lever attachment, that's only available for the CL3100. And they do also, for the CL3100, they also offer an STS-15 door kit. This will is great in auditoriums or band practice areas. This will prevent the travel of sound through the doors and drop it down to an STC of 55. And a few more I wanted to mention is that the CL3100 will now accept Yale's six or seven pin conventional cylinders, and it will accept Yale's six or seven pin large format interchangeable core cylinders. So as you can see, these locks are very versatile. Next, we're going to take a few minutes to talk about the CL3300 series once again. This is a lot different than the CL3100. As you can see, there are through bolt holes. So this does require a modified 161 door prep. This is grade one and it does meet ADA requirements. This has a seven year warranty. And once again, the, free, the trim on the outside is free wheeling wind lock, which means it rotates even though the rotates without having any effect on the latch bolt. As I mentioned, the CL3300 is only available with the D rows, but it is available with four different lever designs. Once again, standard back set is three and three quarter inches, but available with a three and three quarter inch back set, a five inch back set, and a three quarter inch latch bolt throw for fire rated doors. This is quick look at the construction details. So the levers are cast levers and the through bolts do prevent it from rotating. The rose is an inch and a half diameter, which means it will cover other people's through bolt holes. And the latch bolt is stainless steel. So the way you, the function is laid out, CL once again for cylindrical lock, the 3300 series, and the last two digits would represent the function. There are 10 non-cylinder functions, 11 cylinder, single cylinder functions, and three double cylinder functions. Out of all the locks we've been talking about, there are only the only the CL3300 is available electrified. So if you need to have an electrified cylindrical lock, you're going to have to go with the CL3300 series. What I'm pointing out here is the ANSI number here. The ANSI number, like the F109 or the F110, that's great for cross-referencing between various manufacturers. So what I'm going to show you next is an example. Here, once again, we're looking at the Corbin Rustwin catalog, the CL3351, that has an F09 ANSI number. This is pointing out a sergeant mortise lock with an F109 ANSI number. This is a Schlage with an F109 designation. And here is a Yale lock with an F109 designation. All of these locks will operate the same way. And the easiest way to tell that is by the F109, because if you had to read each of those descriptions, it would be very difficult to tell how each of these locks work and how they work in comparison to each other. But all of these locks should work in the exact same way. As I said, the CL3300 is the only one that's available electrified. And one thing to be aware of with Corbin Rustwin products, when it is electrified, 
they'll still have the CL for the cylindrical lock, the CL, the 3300 would represent the series, but there's always gonna be a nine in between the series and the function number. So it's a CL33903 for a fail safe with cylinder override and a CL33905 for fail secure with a cylinder override. The electromechanical locks have a two year limited warranty, okay? These do have the freewheeling trim. So they have that anti-vandal release mechanism to prevent people from damaging the lock. So the lever does rotate when it is in the locked position. It does have a self-contained solenoid allowing installation in modified door prep. So you will need a slight modification there. Uh, we'll operate, you need to specify either 12 or 24 volts and key override is standard. And once again, you will be specifying the function number, which will specify if it's fail safe or fail secure. If you need a request to exit switch, that's specified as an M92, M92 for a request to exit switch. And once again, these will come with Electrolinks connectors. And just a quick reminder, the nine represents an electrified product. Now we're gonna take a quick look at how to order the CL3300. Are you ready to place an order for Corbin Ruswin's cylindrical locks? <laughs> Chances are your project has multiple openings that require different types of locks with different functions. That's why it's important to order the proper configurations of locks to ensure your project stays on schedule. In this video, we'll step through how to generate an accurate and complete order using the CL3300 series lock set as an example. We'll start by entering the number of locks needed. For this example, we'll order 24 locks. Then, we'll choose the series and function needed for the locks, all of which can be found in the product catalog. In this case, we're ordering a CL3300 series lock with a classroom function. So, we'll enter CL33 for the series number and 55 for the function. Next, choose the trim which encompasses the lever and rose design. In this example, we will choose a new port lever with a D rose, so we'll enter NZD here. Next, choose the finish of the locks. Different finishes add a unique style to your space. For this project, we like the satin chromium plated finish, so we'll specify 626. The hand determines which way the door swings to open when standing on the secure side of the opening. LH stands for left hand and RH stands for right hand. LHR and RHR stand for reverse options. Now we need to specify the back set, the distance between the center line of the lock set and the edge of the door. The standard back set for this series of locks is two and three quarters inches. But since the measurement on our sample doors is three and three quarters inches, we'll specify B334 here. You may want to select an optional strike for your doors. Locks in this series come standard with strikes that have an ANSI curved lip and measure one and a quarter inches from lip to center. Our sample project requires one and a quarter inch T strikes, so we'll enter SC114 right here. Next, choose any additional options needed for your locks. In this example, we'll select optional knurling on the outside only. So we'll specify M21 here. For a list of codes for all available options, consult the product catalog. Next, we have to specify any special cylinder or keying options needed. When ordering Corbin Ruswin lock sets, you can choose between visual or concealed key control. With visual key control, the key symbol is stamped on the plug face of the cylinder. With concealed key control, the key symbol is stamped in a concealed location, such as the rear of the cylinder, so it's not visible to general occupants. For our example, we'll select visual key control cylinders only, so we'll enter VKC3 for this order parameter. For all available cylinder or keying options, refer to the cylinder and keying options section of the catalog. Finally, if your project requires master keying, 
You must provide all information concerning the key system layout when you place your order. Each keyed lock will require a key set. The key set determines which keys in the master key system will operate the lock. In this example, we are setting up a four-level master key system and keying these locks to key set AA1. This means the lock will be operated by the change key AA1, the master key AA, the grandmaster key A, and the great grandmaster key or GGM. That's it, your order is complete. Just keep in mind that function, trim, finish, and hand are required fields when ordering cylindrical locks. At Corbin Ruswin, we are committed to getting your order right the first time. And by ensuring your order string is completed correctly, you'll avoid delays in processing. Finally, to ensure accurate billing, please reference any quotes you have received. So that's how you order a CL3300. Next, we'll take a few minutes to look at the CL3500. Once again, this is ANSI BHMA grade one. Um, it's still a heavy duty lock. The big difference here is that the lever is rigid when it's locked. It's ideal for hotels and offices. It is UL listed. And as I mentioned previously, there are three lever designs, 11 different functions, and it's available with a full assortment of cylinders, both interchangeable core standard and high security. Just like the CL3300, it has a seven year warranty and its standard is one and three quarter inches thick. But it will accept, but it is also available with a one and three eighth inch door thickness, which is more of a residential door thickness. But it is available with a full variety of back sets. So once again, quickly how to order these, you order them all in the same manner. So the quantity, the CL for cylindrical lock, the 3535 for the 3500 series, 55 specifies a classroom function. Then it would be a new port, zinc with a D rose and a 626 finish. And this lock is non-handed. And next, a quick look at the grade two cylindrical lock. Once again, this has the lever release, the vandal resistance, they are cast levers because they are the same levers that we were that are used on the other products. But once again, it is only certified to grade two, but it is UL listed for fire rated doors. And of course you have independent springs for the inside and outside, and it is through bolted. Um, once again, only three lever designs available with the full variety of cylinders but this one has a five year warranty. The whole idea of the CL3800 is you can have continuity in a building because there's no reason you should have to pay for a grade one lock for all the doors in the building when you don't need that much security. So this is why they developed the CL3800. It's a lower price lock and it can be used in those areas that don't need the higher security. Just like the CL3500 and the CL3300, it is through bolted, so through bolts are so it does require a modified 161 door prep, but it's using the same levers as all of the other products, as the other ones, as we mentioned, because they all have the same lever design. So this is the CL3800. And that brings us to the end of our presentation. I do appreciate everyone taking the time today to attend this webinar. Hopefully you found it somewhat educational and enjoyable. Thank you very much for attending and stay healthy and Stay healthy and happy, and please join us for more Asa Abloy webinars. Thank you.